Good day, YouTube. It is the 25th of May, 2023, and uh, this is the second video on this Honda EU 3000 IS generator that I picked up last night uh, off a of marketplace. Um, it is rough. Um, it is not the roughest one. I got videos out there on one that was way worse than this. Um, this one actually, with the pull rope, starts and runs, and actually doesn't run too bad, but it will not start on the electric starter. Now, when I looked at this last night, I was fully aware of its condition, um, and I paid $450 for it, so um, that is probably all it was worth, but this thing has some cosmetic issues, but underneath the tins. It's actually in pretty good shape. Um, I was pretty confident I knew what was wrong with this thing when I read the ad. The ad was that it won't start with the key, okay? Not that it wouldn't turn over, but it would crank and not start. But if you pull the rip cord, it will start. In fact, it'll just start right up when it's cold. Um, so I did a previous video earlier today, actually, um, where we went through it and assessed it, changed the oil, put a new spark plug in it, changed the air filter, cleaned out the fuel sediment bowl, um, all of the basics to just give this thing a service and a tune-up. And of course, it still doesn't start wasn't uh, looking for a miracle there. It was looking for big things that might have been wrong with it. Um, it was not in horrible condition as far as service and tune-up was concerned, but it was ready for service and a tune-up. So why doesn't it start? Well, here's some clues. And again, last night when I read the ad, I actually think I saw the ad two days ago. We've been working on a deal for a couple of days. Um, because of how they described how this thing was working, I thought it's got tight valves. Um, valves need adjusted. That's what I thought right off the bat. And that's where we're headed right now. Um, we got to kind of finish what we started in the tune up. So, did a, a first video and um, it's uploaded now. You can go watch that before or after this. Where we're headed now is to adjust the valves and then clean out the spark arrestor. That's the two remaining components uh, that this thing needs to be healthy. And I'm going out on a limb here a little bit and saying I guarantee you that it's the valve adjustment is what this uh, generator's issue is. Besides what it looks like, um, that's what the issues are. So let's get into getting this thing apart and getting to the valve adjustment. I've got projects that I should be doing right now I'm in the middle of cleaning up my truck and camper, getting ready for a trip. But I'm addicted to these things. I do not, I don't have a good excuse for what I'm about to do. You know, taking this thing apart and doing more work on this thing. But I can't leave it alone. I cannot leave it alone. I have to work on this. I have to get it working properly. There's no real reason for it. I just have to do it. Mentally, I don't know. There's something wrong with me. we got to do it. Um, it uh, might be convenient to pull this door off. Um, and to do that, you take this 10 millimeter headed bolt out of here and you take the top hinge off and then this comes apart. Um, these hinges are often missing when you get these clunkers like this. And then we got to take this end plastic off. Working in the shed today. It's not too hot out, so I got a little fan going. And we got to pull this off. So there's some 10 millimeter acorn nuts, four of them there, then a couple bolts down at the bottom. So. Let's pull this stuff off. This stuff will all come off here. Um, if I remember right, I think we gotta take the muffler off. Um, we gotta get the spark arrestor out anyway, so 
let me get to pulling some of this stuff apart and I'll bring you back. Um, and the more reason I'm going to do this video separately is I've done one of these before, maybe a year ago. Um, it was the one that was in worse condition than this one. And I kind of cruised through the valve adjustment. And I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've had some comments that some folks really wished I'd have spent more time uh, with the valve adjustment. So that's why I'm making a separate video so we could spend the time with the valve adjustment. Um, these things are so bulletproof otherwise. Um, when there's something wrong with them, it probably is a valve adjustment just from running five or six hundred hours or something. Um, it just needs a valve adjustment. So let's just take our time and do this one right and show how to do it. I'm not real big into how-to videos, but um, with this I'll make an exception. We'll do a how-to video on adjusting the valves. All right, let me get this the tins and stuff pulled off and then we'll reconvene. All right, I got the bolts loose. There are four bolts on that lower cover. I think four. Well, I think we got to get the plastic off first. Yep. There we go. Set this up here. The lower cover. Let's put the bolts in here. There's a little heat shield right there. I think it just pulls off. I think it just pulls off. I might have to take this handle off, huh? Yeah. We've got to take this shield off and the handle off. Alright, these are 10 millimeter on the top. All right, heat shield unbolted. Now we got 12 millimeter headed bolts to get this handle assembly off. 12 millimeter. One handle expertly removed. Get my bolts all out of here. Come on. Sometimes it's easier just to use a magnet. Come on. Alright. There's that. Now this insulation. It's broken. Maybe a little critter nest action going on. What do you think? Yeah. Good thing we had this apart, huh? Wow. Dang. Clean this up. All right, it's kind of really a little hard to see. Probably four bolts gets the valve cover off of here. Um, I pulled this cover off over here. This 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 white plastic has got a screwdriver slotted fastener in it. Allows you to get to the spark plug, and hopefully there's enough room to get that valve cover out. I have taken the bolt and nut off of this piece here, but I don't see that it comes right off so 
it might be a little bit of a fight to get the valve cover off. It's got to come off. Let's see if we can get it out of there with this thing. Injury. You can get to the screws. That's good. Be real careful and save this gasket because I ain't got one. Coming off. It's coming unsealed there. So I'm looking to see this breather hose, what's easier. Get it out of the valve cover here. Something in my mind said the last one of these I did, I'd take the muffler off. But I'm going to try without it. Oh. Let me fight this for a little bit. And I'll tell you what I did. Alright. I think uh, we're going to have to take that muffler off. So this is where the spark arrestor is. And there are three screws to get them off there. This is 12 millimeter to get the exhaust off. Man, I hope this comes off good. I sure hope it do. It's a 12 millimeter. Do I have one now? 12 millimeter. Let me find one. Hit everything with some PV blaster. Let's get the spark arrestor out of our wood. I think cleaning the spark arrestor is part of its 100 hour service. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, I wonder if this one's ever been done. Again, 8 millimeter. This one here is from the underside. Braille method. Me. Give me a moment. Alright, a uh, 8 millimeter socket with an extension and I got it. It was super tight. Oh my goodness. But we got it. Just pulls out. Just pulls out. Just pulls out. I'm gonna have to get something to just pull it out. There we go. She's a little cakey. Look at that. So it needs clean, but it wasn't well. 
it's not very I'd say 50% plug so we'll clean that out in a little bit all right now we got to get this muffler off these are 12 millimeter somewhere I got a 12 millimeter that one They've been soaking for five minutes. Spacers. Alright, one muffler expertly removed. Okay. Like I say, this is all about valve adjustment and getting to it and the steps and all that. That's why we're doing this video separately. Now we can get the valve cover out of there. Boy, that gasket seen better days now what did I say I I predicted maybe I didn't say it in this video I predicted that the ignition ignition that the intake would be tight and the exhaust would be loose um, I'm gonna have to turn this over a little bit but if you've got one valve that is open then you can adjust the other valve okay So, I'm going to rotate the engine with the pull cord here. This will be easier with the uh, spark plug out. Let me take a minute. I'm going to pull the plug. Pulling the plug on this deal. Pulling the plug. Then we won't have any compression to fight. You can do it without it, but let's not fight it. Especially the angle I need to be to see this. So we're going to watch for this valve, which would be the intake valve, the one on the inside, to close or to open. It's activated. Okay, it's already down, already down. And then we can adjust this valve. Okay. I believe the specs are five thousandths intake and eight thousandths exhaust. Okay. So let's uh, open the exhaust valve and see where the intake is. Okay. So the exhaust valve is open. Okay. Now the intake. It's not horrible. I've got to tell you, it's not horrible. Okay. We get to be the gauge out. So check the spec. I'm setting them at 5,000 intake, 8,000 exhaust. That's where I'm going to set them. Okay. 
right. So it's a little difficult to see in here, but this, I'll show you on the outside when I haven't broke the sluice yet. This is a 14 millimeter wrench, and this is the locking nut, and it is backwards thread, okay? So right to make it go loose, okay? This is a 10 millimeter, and this is the adjustment, okay? So to loosen this, it takes two wrenches. We're going to put the 14 on it and the 10 on it. Remember, 14 is going backwards. And we're going to grab the two, and we're going to loosen it. We're going to break the lock nut loose, okay? It takes a little coordination to get both of them on here. And you're fighting a little bit of the generator frame at the same time. I hope I'm not in your way, but... I need that up there. broke it loose and that's the exhaust we're not adjusting the exhaust I'm just showing you how to get it loose okay so we're back here on the intake the 10 millimeter on the outside is your adjustment okay it's going to take a few attempts to get this right we have a five thousandths feeder gauge okay where's my camera Hello. I got so much zoom. Zero zero five. Okay, got it. Got it. Right now it's too tight. Okay, and you want just good drag. Okay, so I got good drag right there. And then we're gonna try to tighten the 14 without remember it's backwards without adjusting the 10 making it off and you're going to have to tighten this and then you're going to have to check it and you're going to have to loosen it and you're going to have to check it like that okay it's a pain i've seen better and I'm checking and it's too tight. So now we gotta loosen again. So confusing. Golly, it's hard to get in there with big tools there. So what I did is I took just a little bit of a turn on that 10. Okay? I'm trying to open it up just a little bit so I get drag. Ooh. Not bad. Not bad. Now then, I'm just going to snug it up, make sure it's tight. Okay, and then double check. It's better to have these a little loose than a little tight. These were a little tight, okay? Oh yeah, it's in there and I've got good drag. That's what you want right there. Good drag. Five thousands. Now we need to rotate this engine and do the exhaust valve. To do that, we just need the intake valve to open. Okay. So the intake valve is opening. Now we can adjust the exhaust. I've already broke it loose. 
I need to go to eight thousandths. Make sure, because these just, feeler gauges are small. I mean, they're really thin. It's possible, and I've done it, to get two of them, and then, you know, two of them together, and then you've got way too much gap. Okay, as it sits too tight. We're adjusting. I meant too loose. Okay, there I can get it in there, but it's too much drag. You want just the right amount of drag. It's so hard to get this in the way it's designed. I'm looking for a better angle. That's not bad. Let's tighten it and see what we get. Now we'll check it and we'll redo it as many times as it takes to get it right. Again, I'm hunting for a better angle to get my feeler gauge in there. Okay, it's clearly too loose, okay? Way too loose. So I'm gonna break these loose again and I'm gonna adjust it a little bit tighter Oh, we could use some more room in there. Really could. Did that dude just fall out of there? Of course it did. Only got a little bit of space to work with, but be patient. Okay, I guess the more you do it, the easier it will become. Eight thousandths, go in again. We have drag, we don't have enough drag. Tightening it up, tightening up the valve clearance, and now I am tightening up the jam nut. Baby steps, but we're getting there. Yep, too loose. Too loose. Tightening up valve clearance. Tightening up the jam. Try again, eight thousandths. I got drag, I got almost too much drag. So we're gonna back up just a little, okay? Both wrenches on. See if we can just go backwards just a little. Always forget which direction I gotta go. 
just loosen in a little, back it up just a little, tighten the jam. So just a fraction of a turn, just trying to get a little less drag. Ah, shoot, I'm too loose again. All right, let me fiddle. I'll get it. All right, it took me three more adjustments to get it right. But uh, just sneak up on it. That's the only way I can tell you how to do it. You get a little better at it the more you do it, and I don't do it that often. But All right, we're going to clean up this spark arrestor. You should be able to see all the way through it, but you can't. See how it's plugged there at the end? So, yeah, this wasn't working real good. It's causing quite a restriction. We're just going to spray it out with carburetor cleaner, okay? Let me grab a brush. I think you can buy new ones for like 15 bucks, but you can clean them for three. So this is kind of a double, tripled up screen down at the end, which is why it's kind of blocked. You can kind of see it's a spot weld. Other than that, it's all clean. So we could put this back. Alright, the gasket's junk. Uh, junk. Super thin. I siliconed it. We're going back together with some silicone. Whoops. Whoops. All right, let's put some bolts in this thing. All right, we got those tight. Put the spark plug back in while we were at it. Let's put this spark arrestor back in the exhaust before we put it on the machine uh, so it will uh, be easier. And then I dropped my screw for the second time. Never go far without a magnet. I'm just going to try to tap that down in there. Orientation to this thing. It's got a little hole right there. So there's a little hole on here. It seems like it was keeping it from going in. I'm looking for a, something that lines that up, and I don't see anything. I don't see anything. I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine until it ain't fine. You might want to wait till you take the exhaust off to take this 
uh, spark arrestor out because that one bottom bolt was kind of a bugger to work on. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but why fight it? You don't have to. Until you get them all in there. Then go if you won't start. They've got a little Phillips head on them if you need a little help get them started. Get a little Phillips help to it. There we go. Now we can tighten them. Think this thing will start with this electric starter now? The valves were a little tight, but they weren't a lot tight. But when this thing warms up, things change. So my other clue was it would start good with the rope. And then when it warmed up, it didn't start so good with the rope. Okay, these two washers must go between the muffler and that mount on the engine belt. See if I can get them all in there. Come on. Go right there. And then... this nut situation. Oops, not this nut. It fits, but this is the right nut. And then this bolt situation. So, yeah, now this is kind of in the way, but you gotta fight something, I guess. I don't wanna just drop that right there somewhere. What? Why'd you go all the way in there for? I need you here. Okay, I'll tighten them up. Okay, it's all back together, except for the tins and such. And I want to see if I was successful. I want to see if my diagnosis was correct. I have to plug the breather tube into the valve cover, I forgot. Okay, I got it. I gotta say I'm a little nervous. Uh, well, let's try it. Gas on. Choke on. Okay, baby. It's time to come to life now.
sure thought that was it. I'm going to pop the air box, throw some starter fluid in it, and see if we have a carburetor issue. Because that would be next. Okay. Starter fluid. Okay, gas on, no choke. If it fires with starter fluid, then we know we have a fuel issue. got everything back together and it's time to see if she'll start uh, I'm a little nervous about this because we didn't find huge valve misadjustments okay gas on choke on I didn't think the ignition electric start had anything to do with the ignition on this thing. Let's pull the rope. Pull up a wiring diagram on this thing, see what's up. <laughs> 